I can remember being in the gross room as a resident because the residents do all the cutting up of the specimens. You, you would get this towel with something, a surprise in it, a specimen from a patient from the OR. And I remember every time I was opening a specimen, it was like, oh boy, what's going to be in here? Nancy is truly a consummate clinician. She interacts only with patients at the level of their glass slides and tissues and blood and bone marrow. You ask Dr. Harris what she thinks about a case, and I swear she could look at that bone marrow biopsy and tell you how old the patient is, what their eye color is, and what they ate for breakfast that day. Nancy Harris is one of the most prominent hematopathologists, uh, uh, not only in the United States, but, uh, but around the world. I mean, I can't think of anybody else who's had such exceptional lifetime achievements. I mean, when you just think of the number of individuals whose uh, training she's influenced, you're looking at leaders in, in the field of hematopathology now, and all of them carry with them the fact that they're our former Harris Fellow. I love teaching at the microscope. I tell them, we're going to look at a slide. You've all previewed it. We'll ask whoever feels comfortable to start describing it and telling us what they think. The first person who talks, talk until you don't know anymore, and then we'll call on a more senior person. That person will talk until they don't know anymore, and when you run out of steam, I'll start talking. One expects pathologists, and historically pathologists, have justified the expectation that they sit in a dark room and they look through their microscopes and they interpret the tissue on the slides and render a diagnosis. What Dr. Harris practices is that those glass slides have tissue that come from real patients and that you can't really understand and make a fully informed pathologic diagnosis without understanding the clinical context in which it arises. Every time I go to show her a case I'm having difficulty with, the first thing she asks me are questions about the clinical history, uh, how the patient presented, what the laboratory findings are, and I, I actually have learned now that I have to bone up on all that stuff before I go show her a case because she's gonna ask me all these questions and I, I wanna provide her with the data. And what Dr. Harris recognized relatively early in her career is that you can't fully understand the underlying lymphoma without understanding the patient. And you can't fully understand the patient without involving the clinician. For example, infectious mononucleosis can look like lymphoma. We just had a case a week or so ago in which that exact question came up. And if you had looked at the lymph node, you would have just been sure it was lymphoma, but it wasn't. It was a 45-year-old man with infectious mono. Now, you wouldn't think of that in a 45-year-old man, but that's what it was, and he got better. Back in the early 90s, um, there were competing classifications in lymphoma. Um, so there were about six different classifications. The classification system of lymphoid neoplasms um, you know, was really actually in a state of complete disarray. There was even a mocking letter written to The Lancet about the ridiculous number of lymphoma classifications that had been published within the space of a few years. So if different people are using different classifications, it's very hard to make sense out of the clinical behavior and, and outcome or responses to different treatments. Um, you really can't translate the uh, results. So she was really instrumental in bringing forward and putting forward a proposed classification system that really gained worldwide attention. We decided that we should have a clinical advisory committee so that this classification would actually be useful to clinicians. Dr. Harris was a leader in bringing clinicians to the table in helping create a classification system that was actually clinically relevant to patients. We called it the real classification it was kind of a joke. Uh, I was having dinner with my husband one night, trying to think what we should call the classification. Someone had said, well, it's a disease-based classification. And he said, no, it's, it's a reality-based classification. You have to call it the real classification. <laughs> uh, okay, revised European American lymphoma classification. It emphasized real diseases based on both clinical and biologic features that could be identified not only by a single expert in this city, that city, or that country, but rather could be reproducibly created and identified from any center in the United States to Europe to other parts of the world. Real diseases with real impact on patients. And once you can agree worldwide on what a real disease is, 
then clinicians can actually decide how best to treat that disease. Now when we diagnose lymphoid neoplasms, we essentially use uh, terminology that she helped to develop, uh, that she influenced, and we are speaking the same language around the world. Uh, so a patient goes, can take their pathology report, you know, to a, a different country, and a hematopathologist and an oncologist who treats lymphoid neoplasms will read it and will actually know uh, what it means. I think if you ask most people who read the New England Journal of Medicine, they'll tell you that the single part of that journal they always leaf to first is the case record of the Mass General Hospital, where an interesting case is presented, the pathology is presented, the radiology is presented, a puzzle is created for the reader. You learn a lot of medicine as a pathologist <laughs> running and editing the CPCs, as I, as I like to say, my knowledge of medicine is uh, 40 cases wide and one case deep. <laughs> so I've seen one of everything. <laughs> the case records of the, of the Massachusetts General were largely based around somebody dying and an autopsy being performed. Since Nancy has been involved in the editorship, many more of the cases have been uh, while patients are still alive. So they're based more on biopsies or fine needle aspirates or other clinical findings. It's really broadened the type of cases that are, are presented and discussed. She will scour the entire hospital and find the most interesting cases, the most relevant cases, the most instructive cases. And when those cases are published, it's yet another way that Dr. Harris has directly helped teach clinicians, pathologists, uh, and other interested parties who pick up that journal all across the world. Dr. Harris being the consummate clinician, the clinician's pathologist, the pathologist's pathologist, uh, she is the person you always want at the table. If I had to pick a single quality that exemplifies her, it's curiosity. She really embodies this desire to go after the truth. So it's almost like, I don't care if I'm wrong. I just want to make sure I get the diagnosis right because the person who really matters isn't, you know, me, it's the patient. One of my favorite lines is a skeptical clinician is a pathologist's best friend because they can keep you from making a wrong diagnosis because you just didn't have all the information you needed. And I think that makes her a better pathologist. And I think that makes her a better mentor. And I think it makes her a better teacher because she helps make pathologists more understanding of the clinical context in which those diseases occur. And she makes the clinicians more cognizant of the pathologic relevance of the diseases the patients have. And so her curiosity, both clinically and pathologically, really bridges that world. And for me, as a medical oncologist, has taught me more than anybody that medicine is a team sport and that optimal care of a patient requires, particularly in lymphoma care, a dedicated medical oncologist and a dedicated hematopathologist focused together on the relevant questions and the clinical obstacles facing our patients. I think Dr. Harris is a, is a perfect candidate for this uh, prestigious award uh, because of her uh, impact in uh, not only pathology, but uh, clinical medicine and uh, not, not only uh, locally and nationally, but uh, internationally.